Freedom Fiends. Yo, yo. It's yo. the Fiends, man. It's the Fiends, man. My head feels all hot from arguing with statists on Facebook. I really should stop for my own health, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> statists? You, you talk to some statists. Now, the name of today's cast, and we're going to introduce a new word here, it's statheism. Who needs an invisible god when you've got one in the White House? Do you have the uh, definition of statheism in front of you there, Nima? If not, I can uh, pigeon uh, pigeonomatic it to you. Uh, yeah, pigeonomatic to me. The the definition it's, as according to it's uh, there. Oh, here we go. All right. So yeah, we read this on a previous cast, but we'll go ahead and read it again for clarification since uh, we use it in the title. Uh, here is our definition, or what is it? Uh, what's that thing called, man? That thing on the internet. It's a thing on the internet's definition of statheism. One who rejects religion as irrational, but who advocates the existence of the state, usually as a desperate compensation for the comfort that religion brings. The term is most often used by anarchist atheists to demonstrate to the statheist that the logic they use to justify the state is faulty, even though they had sufficient logic to reject religion, implying that they are reproducing the same errors in thinking that they profess to despise in religious people. Yeah, people are asking me questions. Yeah. I'm multitasking here. Will Coley is asking me questions. Will Coley is, uh, we're doing an interview today. Speaking of um, religious beliefs, so, uh, Will Coley is our Muslim libertarian friend, and he's going to debate uh, Jack Berkman, who did a video called All Muslims Are Savages. And uh, that, that should be a lively one because, you know, conflict is the essence of drama. Yeah. <laughs> it should be um although i don't expect to uh to really get any convincing or um catharsis on the part of mr what is it berkman or berman berkman Ber berkman not berkman yeah. berkman <laughs> yeah i don't know I, I guess i don't have any confidence that it'll change his mind at all He'll, it'll probably just reduce him to you know his normal uh self Making you know what you see from him in the video is I think what you'll probably see in the the debate as well. But it'll be nice to to listen to Will Coley mop the floor with him, which is uh, what I imagine will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where'd you go? <laughs> We're both was, off the ball here, like uh, uh, stealing time from the fiends to do things. Um, yeah. All right. Focus. I, well, focus I'm, on the. I was fiends actually show. communicating with Will Coley on computer number two. Telling him uh, to check his Facebook to see where to listen live to answer his question on uh, computer three. I'm I'm just I'm strapped in. It looks like I'm in a like driving a jet right now, driving a uh, jet into my uh. backyard. <laughs> Boy, and that's not a threat. I just you know. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be a threat if it's your own backyard, would it? Well, it would. I'm sure if you. So anyway, statheism. Statheism. Statheists are atheists now i like agnostics better than atheists because agnostics uh they're like yeah i don't believe in god i don't care what you do whatever there might be i don't know i don't think and statheists are atheists are absolutely sure there is no god and uh yeah. you know to a lot of people that's the logical conclusion but a lot of atheists are also statists and usually liberals uh it doesn't matter which side they are but you know they will defend the state like it is their religion and uh, statheism is a great term for atheist uh you know people like us atheist uh, anarchists or libertarians to use with statist atheists to point out the ridiculousness of being statist because uh, most statists i mean statism literally is believing in the god of the state yeah yeah that's the definition i work with or from at least and yeah, I mean, I feel like you do have to have a form of faith to think that uh, empowering men with a monopoly of force will somehow breed good results. Um, you know, in, in another show, I think it was a Thursday show, we were trying to talk to gun grabby people in the chat room. And I made the point that uh, you want power to be as decentralized as possible, and that includes power over violence. You don't want any kind of massive power to be concentrated um, because you get horrible results from it. And I think that that's what you get with the state. And if you believe that giving one group of people all the guns in the world and all the power in the world to use them, if you believe that that's how society gets better, um, I think that's a big leap of faith. Yeah, and statheists always respond to that with things like, oh, so you want everyone to be violent. <laughs> 
No, uh, I don't. But I think everyone should have uh, have the same ish level of power. Um, I think it was. Carol Quigley. I didn't read the book, and we've got some fans who really love that book. He wrote what tragedy and and hope. I think it yeah. is. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and he's Carol Quigley. I guess he's sort of an insider, and, and part of the book is explaining how these kinds of things work. Uh, but he, I think, makes the argument. Um, I'm getting this second hand from uh, Scott Horton, but he makes the argument. Carol Quigley does that. You know, people's freedom tend. You, you you're able to see it through the lens of. Um, how much the weaponry of the general masses is similar to the weaponry of the government. So if the government has something like uh, drones or aircraft carriers, uh, these massive weapons, and you know your average person, the best they can hope to achieve is an AR-15, semi-automatic, not even full automatic, um, you're going to have a big disparity in power and, se- and hence uh, a much more likely environment for tyranny. Now in um in uh the new James was it the James Bond movie or was it uh no it was uh Mission Impossible 3 I think the hero shoots down a drone at close range with a full auto AR15 Really <laughs> Well it's a and, well, and it and it's a private drone too it's owned by some evil corporate guy who's you know trying to destroy the world Mhm mm-hmm. and it's but, I think uh, it, yeah I think you could go throughout history and see this, and I'm not. The examples aren't readily coming to me right now, but uh, I mean, just think about um, you know when people all they had was rifles, and all the government could do was get more people with rifles. Um, you know, you had things like the American Revolution, which again, I don't know if I'd call it an actual revolution, but you have a, a situation where locals, uh, just average Joe Schmo, Schmo, can take on the biggest imperial power in the world because the weaponry between them is the same. Uh, and a lot of statheists and statists who have some sort of religious belief believe that what you're saying is like treasonous talk. I mean, you know, literally, you're just talking about the Second Amendment in a non written down kind of form, just a human mm-hmm. nature kind of form. I mean, literally, when you when you quote Jefferson these days about like keeping the, the government in check, let alone getting rid of it, uh, you know, I mean, there are people who say you should there are politicians who say you should be thrown in prison for saying those things. <laughs> now, let's get back to statheism. I think we got a little off in a good direction, but we went off. Um, talk more about statheism and the disconnect and the what's the term when people believe one thing and then there's another thing, the uh, harmonic dissonance or the cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance um, yeah. of being a statheist. Because they're all into logic. I mean, most atheists love to, a lot of atheists, atheists love to sit around and argue and use what they say as logic, although they usually have logic mixed with logical fallacies. But, yeah, uh, yeah. and if anyone well, thinks I, I that think, I, I think sound. A lot of it is, is missed premises and bad correlations. So, statists might, you know, statheists might make the argument that, uh, well, look at the, the massive amount of technology and the massive amount of progress we've made in the last uh, few hundred years. Um, and that's also when you've seen governments be at their biggest and most powerful. Um, but I think the, the causation there is mistaken. Yeah, those two things both seem to go up at the same time, but I don't think that st- the state is what caused it um, because the state can't really cause things like that. It's like saying that, um, you know, the wet sidewalks or that, that the wet sidewalks caused the rain when in fact it's backwards. I think that technolo- technological progress yeah. happens in spite of the state um, because it's not the state that's doing the the – the progression they're not the ones that are actually building the products making the products or taking uh, a risk as an entrepreneur would, would in order to sell the products and to find out what people want the most the governments aren't or the states actually not doing those kind of market actions um, and then then you could say well governments do things like make it safe for people to innovate and things like that and I'd say well uh, look at what governments actually do things like patent laws um, IP, all those kinds of things. Yeah, like how Apple has just patented turning a page on a computer screen and Microsoft has patented the ability to spy on you in your living room with the Microsoft Connect cameras to fine you if you have too many people watching a movie you rented from them. Right, exactly. And how is it innovation to say one company can do this or one company can force you to not do this? That's not innovation. That doesn't breed it to me. And we'll have more on that coming up very soon. And if you think I sound great, it's my new Shure Beta F57A microphone, which uh, Ben Quaker is also using now, and he sounds great. 
Gun Training with the non aggressive A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe! It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum Vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from the mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum Vibe. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com That's freedomfiends.com you don't want to talk about buttons? Buttons are great. I don't want to talk about our personal business between what we're doing with buttons, when, how, <laughs> and, and, and all that kind of stuff. A, it bores people. And I know. B, it's, uh, so, statheism. Not, none of their business. Statheists. Statheists. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, I'm having an argument with statheists right now on Facebook, and Still? it's getting my head hot. Today or right all. now? T- today and right now. You're and stealing yesterday. time from the fiends? Cool. Uh, sort of, man. Are you live but, and just read it? I mean, that's what the, the internet is now, isn't? I mean, isn't that where radio is now? You just argue on Facebook and read it while you're doing it. Well, okay. So I called this guy a name, and yeah, that was my bad because he wrote a whole paragraph doing nothing but calling me names and didn't really make any actual arguments. He just called my arguments sweeping generalizations and did this, and then told you to move to Somalia. Uh, well, okay. So I guess we'll go through the thing here. Um, so. This was what he said in response to. First of all, I I, I posted a thing like Google Stathius because a Stathiest friend of mine put Don't up. Don't tell a, people a post. to Google it. You just send it. You 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 need to post it to them. You don't want to uh, make them jump through hoops, man. They're not going to yeah. do that. I mean, you're okay. saying you're saying here's here's something that'll make you look like an idiot. Jump through a hoop to make yourself look like an idiot. No, just make them look like an uh, idiot. Okay, good point. Good point. News you can use. Um, so anyway, uh, this guy that I know, um, he was like, oh, yeah, well, Google hypocrisy. And then he went off about how Ron Paul was a hypocrite and you had to have a bunch of uh, and couldn't imagine the the mental hoops you have to jump through for the cognitive dissonance of believing in Ron Paul's inconsistencies. Didn't mention Ron. I didn't mention Ron Paul at all. But yeah, I found that interesting. So uh, I said something like, hey, dude, uh, you just baited me with a red herring. I never mentioned Ron Paul. I'm an anarchist. I don't submit to any man's will, be it Ron Paul or anybody else. I said, uh, do you know what is illogical and faith-based? Believing that giving an institution a monopoly of violence um, and expecting this absolute power to not corrupt absolutely would be, you know, um, faith-based and illogical. You know, and it's really easy for people like him to use the same arguments we use i mean i i would say that guy's full of cognitive dissonance that guy may be a sociopath and that's the same stuff they use on us and they have the state backing them on all of that you know because i mean for instance with psychiatry like if you just say to, to a psychiatrist well i don't accept the authority of any man which i think is a perfectly rational and the only rational answer you know they they say you have a disorder or that's an indi- that's indicative of a disorder yeah yeah um but I guess the thing I'm getting at here is I'm trying to get them to um, to just argue with me on that point, on the point that uh, that is this, that the government is inherently harmful or the state is inherently harmful. Um, and so I'm trying to bring it back because we, we got off on all this kind of name calling. He goes, uh, this, this stooge of his says, 
as far as anarcho-capitalism, let's see how Somalia is doing. Because what I did was I tried to bring him back to, hey, let's not talk about Ron Paul. Let's debate the actual theory of anarcho-capitalism. The only thing they can come up with is, as for anarcho-capitalism, let's see how Somalia is doing. Yeah, so um, he, he gives a – that's such a red herring, man, because Somalia is the furthest from anarcho-capitalism you could believe. I mean, it's right. run by warlords when it's not run by the United States military. You know? Right, right. Well, this was my response to Somalia, and I shouldn't have done this. With everybody just, disarmed it, by the UN. So, Well, it felt so good to call the name, but you really should keep yourself because it's turned into a mess now. But um, uh, it's, a, it's a dude. It's a dude named with a feminine-ish name, and I know it's a dude, but this is what I said to the dude. I said, What's his uh, name, Somalia. Come on, come on, what's his name? Fran Francis Fecto. Um, okay. People say I have a feminine either. name because I use the word kitty feet sometimes, and people say, well, that's a uh, girl's name, and I'm like, what? Well, well Mr. Mr. Francis Fecto, here's what I said to him about Somalia. I said, Somalia, wow, what a great, well-reasoned argument, Ms. Fecto. You get extra credit in retard class today. If I were to make the same oversimplified argument about statism, I could say something like, hey, how's North Korea doing? Or, hey, how did the Soviet Union do? Of course, those two countries actually got theirs actually got there through conscious philosophical effort of their tyrants. Somalia, as you would know if you ever read things, actually is in a state of war-torn horror imposed on them through American intervention. Using, yes, weapons, fellow... that were using weapons made by the Soviet Union, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, basically that, you know, Somalia didn't get there by all deciding, like everybody reading Rothbard and saying, hey, let's uh, start an anarcho-capitalist society. Uh, it's not what happened at all. No, no. Um, it's like saying, and I try to bring it back to the atheist argument, you wouldn't get a society of rational anarchists or rational atheists if the Pentagon all of a sudden cluster bombed the houses of worship in America. And no logical person would make that argument. Like, hey, let's all have an atheist society, so let's explode all the churches and mosques and synagogues. That's not logical at all. Um, so it's, it's silly to say that Somalia is some example that you can point to about anarcho-capitalism just because the pentagon destroyed the state there. somebody's going to kind of edit you out of context saying well, hey let's destroy all the houses of worship in washington dc <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, um it sounds to me like okay I, I don't think you need to read all the rest of this um because yeah. basically it's just you know i i was kind of kidding and i i dug what you did but i'm kind of like i don't want to spend the whole cast getting interrupted by commercials while you read everything on this beef um yeah, but either. it sounds to me like you kind of got it's funny because it's a it's an odd day when you're in a beef and i'm really mellow i mean it's <laughs> when, did, when does that ever happen i mean i'm i'm not beef with anybody I but i I, I, mean. I would say from an outside point of view i think you um you really resorted to some ad hominem there that didn't help your case calling him miss so-and-so uh mm -hmm. and you know well gee you did this this and this i mean i would it's easy for me to give advice and hard for me to take it. I wouldn't necessarily do this, but I think a thing would, to do would have been to try to remain logical. I mean, first of all, I don't engage with people like this because I can tell they're not going to get it. And, you know, if I'm going to say anything snippy, it's going to be, well, if you, and then block them, which is the moral thing to do in my world with those people. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, people have actually taken us to task for being a little too uh, macho libertarian flash and... Mm -hmm. thing you know i i but we are you know and but i would i would say the thing you know you can you can catch more fly i mean i go back to the aa thing of like you know get people by attraction rather than promotion you know you're not going to sober yeah. up a drunk by going down to skid row and screaming at people and calling them girls names <laughs> i know i and usually i'm really good about that it's very I, I don't know what it you. is i know i don't know what it is about today or this week but i i just want to Oh, I don't know. I'm just angry at statists and fed up with them. Okay, so someone's going to take them. someone's going to take that out of context. Let's see. Nima said, "I'm just angry," and so let's blow up all the houses of worship. <laughs> I wouldn't ever call for violence or commit uh, aggression, violence like that. You know, barring self defense. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know, man. I'm well, I'm upset. Viking, and you're you're you wrote a book on how to not be upset about this stuff. So those Viking rock, those Viking rockers in Norway, those uh, black metal Norwegian death rock guys that Death Clock are named on, uh, after, based on. Uh, you know, they burn down churches and they say that that's self defense for you know the Vikings being conquered a thousand years ago or more by the by the tr the church. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I don't but, see it. Uh, I see self defense. They're going to take you out of context. Now. I know. I see something. I see self defense as something eminent threat. Threat. You know, like right. it's coming at right. you right now. And also not collective. I mean, that's why I don't yeah. think preventive war holds water because it's collective. It's punishing everybody for perceived action of a few people. So what lesson did you learn, and how are you going to behave differently on the internet? <laughs> we we don't have enough time for that, but we will talk more about it soon. Okay. Worms. More freedom fiends after we sell some stuff with beautiful anarcho-capitalist voluntarist exchanges. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The freedom fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. It's The Fiends live. It is a call-in show. We've forgotten that. I was getting too heated in my beefs. I apologize. <laughs> you can call us, though, and try to calm me down at uh, 307-215-5171. Again, that's 307-215-5171. Well, we just wanted to tie up and then move on uh, yeah. with what statheism is and you know why the name of this episode is statheism who needs an invisible god when you've got one in the white house basically our thing is that uh you know statism the worship of the state the belief in the state is believe is as absurd to us as believing in some bearded imaginary friend in the sky who guides every movement of the earth is to an atheist and uh atheists believe that their disbelief of a God or their being absolutely sure there is no God is based purely on logic. Yet they often have these incredible leaps in logic to believe that while it's immoral for anyone to hold a gun to someone's head and rob them, that it's moral when it's assigned to a, a, a group that's picked by half plus one of the people. That's it. Right. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to me, it's, it's all about consistency, which is I think why I got so heated, um, uh, and people calling it inconsistent or calling me inconsistent or calling Ron Paul inconsistent, which I guess you could make that argument because he was in the government. Um, because the thing is, is to me that it's completely consistent. And if you want to be consistent, you have to say moral rules apply to everyone, uh, no matter what. Uh, we're all equal in the eyes of, of morality as defined by natural law, which we all sort of um, – sort of come to naturally. I really liked Ben Stone's explanation of how music is a good example of natural law, right? I mean... Oh, that was great. It was great. You know, he basically, he said, you know, music comes out of an anarchic form. People develop it on their own without government supervision. And, uh, you know, imagine what music would be like if it were, if you had to be licensed by the government. And I would say, you know, he didn't, he missed some opportunities there on his great new microphone to, uh, <sighs> to... Uh, he didn't have it then. He also only had it for the last episode. Um, he missed a couple of great opportunities there that I would like to expand on. One is there are examples of what music's like when you're plucked out of school at four and put in the government music camps. It's North Korea, man. I mean, they put on some incredible 10,000 people presentations with amazing music that is really creepy and forced and it's the only music you can get there. There's no folk music mm -hmm. or if there is, it's private, you know, yeah. it's in the homes hidden. Uh, I had some friends, this band called life after life that are from Prague that live in San Francisco. Now that before uh, the velvet revolution in, in the Czech Republic, uh, you know, they were taken, they, they played rock and roll in, in secret and they would have these little club shows in basements and play really quiet to like 30 people. And the cops came in more than once, raided them, beat them, dragged them to the police station, beat them more and put them in prison, in jail for weeks, you know, mm. for playing rock and roll. Mm. 
not even wow. political rock and roll like really just playing rock yeah. and roll just because it's music that was natural to them instead of music that was imposed from on top yeah and i would also yeah. say uh you know another thing that ben missed was the uh not saying Ben did anything wrong. I mean, he was a great show. I just had some, I, I listen to Ben now and I have imaginary conversations with him where I'm the co-host. <laughs> nice. um, so, uh, you know, the iron curtain didn't fall because Reagan yelled at a wall over a, a sure beta SM 57 microphone. <laughs> um, you know, he, the, the iron curtain fell because of smuggled eighth generation cassette tapes and smuggled blue jeans because mm -hmm. people got a taste of freedom that cannot mm -hmm. be stopped by a government yeah and i think another um thing he missed is the list the incredible long list of anarchist musicians there are in you know a lot of them are in punk rock but there are like respected like ja modern jazz musicians who call themselves anarchists and understand what it means now i have another uh you got anything on that because I, I got i do it. i do okay. i really wanted to expand on on ben's points too. Go ahead, I, I, he didn't miss this but he did bring up that um, music still follows laws. And I think that that's really important because music at the same time that it, it's anarchist and true music comes from this anarchist tendencies uh, or anarchic order, it follows hard and fast rules. Um, it's called music theory, right? I well, mean, no, even, when notes... it, even, even stuff that breaks the rules. What he was basically saying is like, uh, you know, status say, well, without law, there would be chaos and murder. Uh, but no, it's really without rules there'd be chaos and murder and there can be rules without government laws you know basically right. that's my people point. I mean, i'm not saying all music uh doesn't all, all music follows the same set of rules but i will say that the human ear um it, it hears things differently and assigns value to them so that uh you know if you're playing music you want it to follow rhythm you want it to follow um you know different tonal progressions it f for the effect that you're trying to feel. Yeah, you want to produce an effect. You want to produce an effect on people. I mean, people said to me, you know, do you, and I've said to people, I only play music for an audience. You know, I rarely, when I was, when I was learning music, I would pick up a guitar and play for joy. And people have said to me like, that's really sad that you don't play for joy anymore, but it's more like, I have so many things to do. The only time I bother playing music and using those skills I developed from the free love of playing music is to write a song or to work with other people to make something that will affect people in a certain way. And if I didn't feel that way, I wouldn't write songs with a verse in a chorus. I would uh, either make feedback squealy sounds in front of an amp in my basement or, you know, play flute out in the woods and tunelessly play out of time signatures because that's more fun than writing a song. <laughs> and that's me that's me having to you it's more fun to you well if you're just playing music for yourself and the ethers you know uh mm -hmm. and the birds or whatever um yeah and that's me putting in anarchic order without even thinking about it it's like okay verse goes here chorus goes here maybe i'll switch it up and put two choruses in a row that's breaking the rules but it's still putting in a chorus you know it's still putting things in an order that the human brain and heart and butt can understand <laughs> I think that's what Ben was saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I think that's so much important to expand on that, that there's something in our brain that tells our brain what music is and what sound and how sounds make us feel because it's natural, right? It's a natural law well, that's you know, in your brain. Yeah. You know what it basically is? It all comes down to the heartbeat. I mean, music is a heartbeat and, uh, you know, I mean, isn't what's the, what's a good tempo for rap? It's like 60 to 80 beats per minute, isn't it? Uh, depends on the, the genre, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I really like rap to be si between 60 and 80. Yeah. Well, that's the um, human so that heartbeat. MC that's the, can double time. That's the human heartbeat. Is it? Okay. Yeah. You know, when you're relaxed and sleeping, it's probably 60. And when you're, you know, not scared to death, but excited and dancing, it's probably 80, 85. If you're healthy, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a human and, well, and a human heartbeats in two, four or four, four, depending on how you want to look at it. And most dance uh, music is. And when you uh, walk, the other the other source of anarchic order is walking. You know, you walk one, two, one, two. You know, it's in two four mm -hmm. or one mm -hmm. or four four. You know, so exactly. people tend to like music that's in two four 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 or a waltz, which is one, two, three, one, two, which is kind of swaying. You know, basically and, things and, and the human four, body four does. Time is, is a really important study in, in market in the way the market makes things work too, because um 
most pop music, most the vast majority, like ninety nine percent of pop music and dance music is all in four four time. You know, there's other time signatures out there, but in order for DJs to mix music together, it makes it a million times easier if it's in four four times. So yeah, the people, market naturally always produces things. People in four, people four. can't dance to five four uh, or seven eight. Um, people can dance to two four four four. Well, two four is a march because you're going one two one two. That's like marching down the street. Dancing is usually in four four. Although dancing can be in three four, which is waltz time, which is right. uh, one, two, swaying. One, it's swaying. Two, it's one, actually two, it, you know what it is. It's swaying with someone else kind of leaning on your arms. It's you and another mm-hmm. person slowly mm-hmm. swaying back and forth or quickly. So right. yeah, I mean the anarchic order of music is all based on uh, on human physiology. I would say and. Uh, as far as the notes, I mean, Western scale and Eastern scale, neither of them are really more perfectly in tuned to the innate human ear or brain. They're just, that's just stuff people came up with to make it work, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but it, it does work though. And it works naturally. Like if you play two notes together that are completely out of key, they will not sound pleasant to you in general. Well, that's um, if they're out of key. I'm talking about the scale it's based on. Right, I mean, there right, is but, a thing but that's, what, that's what the scale is. The scale is picking notes that sound good together. Somebody picked those, or not somebody picked those notes, but those notes exist naturally. Yeah, and that's that math. Good that's basically internal math. Yeah. So we're going to go nobody, sell some. Nobody more. legislated it. We're going to go sell some music that we made and some media and uh, come back. Talk more about music and anarchy on the Freedom Fiends. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Damn show, I was trying to talk to my friend Nima, and this show comes in. I was talking about talking to statheists and atheists, and uh, I was just really Statists. surprised that Nima, Nima got dragged into the trolling, whereas oh, no. he usually like, like looks down on me, and rightfully so, for doing that. Uh, you know what? I blame Frank. <laughs> Your brother? As, as long as I'm being illogical and, and lashing out. No, I'm not really lashing out at you, Frank. But uh, So I dropped some knowledge on the thread, right? And then I just left. And, Frank, and, and somebody else, you know, not the guy that I'm arguing with now, but a good friend of mine who originally posted the post um, was like, you know, ragging on me. And Frank was like, are you going to let him do that? Are you going to let him say that? And, and, and I, I heard on the fiends, you know, you just like to drop science on status and just walk away. And uh, which is normally what I do. I say I say my piece. I let them discuss it amongst themselves. Um, See, the thing for some is, reason, I was yeah. like, you're right, Frank. I will go back and fight. <laughs> and Frank's, 20, t- Frank's 21. You're almost 30. You know, that's a young man's game. Let him do it. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's an immature yeah. thing, but it's like young guys have more of a heart and tolerance for that, you know, and mm-hmm. you're like mm-hmm. an internationally respected like scholar and rock star and people like really think of you you know there are a couple thousand people in the world who you know when they think of the greats of liberty they think of murray rothbard you know ah, um stefan molyneux no, stefan molyneux and nima vidati uh, and i don't know about you know, that man can you picture murray rothbard like you know yelling on the internet at some guy he probably would have if he'd been around but um you know i don't know rise above it brother so anyway i want to move yeah. way beyond let's get this. it let's right I want to talk about my beefs because they're funny this week. Um, <laughs> I was I found that oh, I got I this Google I got this Google alert for Anarchy Gumbo, 
and there was this uh I can't find the website now, but it was a list of like, it was a left anarchist site, like a syndicalist anarchist, you know, communist anarchist site. And they had a page called list of anarchist resources. And it was a bunch of lefty stuff. And in there somewhere was anarchy gumbo and a link. And mm -hmm. then there was a comment on it that said, uh, from one of the moderators, it said, Anarchy Gumbo is definitely an anarcho podcast and possibly a conspiracy cast. And I was like, okay, yay on the first. But the second one, it's like, the Freedom Fiends talk more about conspiracy theories. Generally, I don't on with people on the interview cast, the gumbo, or we don't. And I'm also thinking like an anarchist called us, you know, our interview cast conspiracy theorist because it, it seems ironic to me because i think that any anarchist left or right strongly believes and thinks pretty much nonstop about things that most people would consider conspiracies um like what like what do you think they were pointing to when they said conspiracy cast i don't know man i looked through the last like eight episodes and it all made sense to me, but you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. A lot of leftist anarchists believe in are, are you know, tr uh, nine eleven truthers too. But yeah. uh, no, I just mean basic things like believing democracy is immoral, believing that mm -hmm. you know governments always come at the barrel of a gun, and telling people you know yeah. laws are enforced by the barrel of a gun, and people are like, I've never had a gun to my head. What are you talking about? And you explain it to them of how you know if you don't obey the law they'll come tell you to do it and if you don't do it if you resist they'll put a gun to your head and drag you to a cage or kill you and they're like that's a conspiracy theory man that's <laughs> not how it is i've heard that i've heard no, that wording really? about that yeah People call that a conspiracy theory. yeah huh i mean See, they don't they can see i, I, that I guess that's that's part of the problem of, of of doing these kinds of things on the internet is you can't really have a proper conversation because when I do that one in person it usually seems to get through because I ask them the questions I say hey yeah what would happen if I didn't pay my taxes and then they say the answer um, well I think a lot of people believe the progression when you say the progression of you don't pay your taxes they'll send you bill then they'll send men to your house then they'll send our men to your house and then they'll put a gun to your head if you resist they 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 agree that that progression is what will happen although sometimes they don't even think about it they think oh well laws are just laws they don't shoot you you know you just have to obey them but even people who can see the progression see that as a really convoluted way of looking at it when basis of anarcho-capitalism that's one of the three or four tenets of like that's absolutely how the world works you know and i'll do a lot of statists pointing that out over and over and over as no this is what's going on sounds like a conspiracy theory but i just can't imagine why some lefty anarchist thought that the uh, anarchy gumbo was possibly a conspiracy cast. I don't know what we talked about. Maybe they, I, I don't know how they listened to it. They probably just looked at the show, show notes. So, yeah. Well, I guess sometimes you are like, you know, when you're talking about crypto anarchism, you're like, oh, well, the government, you know, is has the ability to spy on you. Uh, some Man, I think, learned oh, well, that. That's a conspiracy. I the learned that. Be spying on you. I learned that from lefty anarchists 15 years ago. You know, I mean, really, that's yeah. what lefty anarchist doesn't believe the government is out to take everyone's rights and spy on everybody. I mean, that's I know. that's a isn't that a tenant of <laughs> if you're an anarchist, it's a reaction to what the government does wrong in everything it does. How can you be yeah. an anarchist and say, oh, the government wouldn't spy on people? Yeah, which I guess is why I don't really know what we, we've had this conversation before, like why are lefty anarchist anarchists like I, I those two seem mutually exclusive to me if you're lefty they were anarchists before we were anarchists i mean the the idea of anarcho capitalism while things may have existed throughout history occasionally in small places in in examples that looked like that uh you know anarcho capitalism is like a 1940s 1950s construct whereas anarchism meaning anarchism you know communism without a government is like an 1880s or 1890s construct mm -hmm. and you know led to the russian revolution and what happened was they you know they said we're going to do this and make this workers paradise with no government where everyone's self-ruling and as soon as the revolution was over somebody stood up and said all right do as i say yeah and they were a military leader and people love military leaders so they got away with it so yeah yeah okay anyway uh, yeah. I just sent you a couple links. Let's read some of these. I, I wrote a review of the microphone I'm using, the Beta 57A, which is a really nice mic. Uh, I highly recommend it for podcasting. And I really recommend for beginning podcasters who don't 
know anything about audio engineering to use a dynamic mic instead of a condenser mic. Everyone gets the condenser mics because they look sexy and they look pro, but you know, a dynamic, a condenser mic is going to pick up your voice, the ruffling of your shirt, you know, the cat scratching in the next room, the refrigerator in the kitchen and the truck going by outside. Whereas a dynamic mic is just going to pick up your voice. So, but I wrote this, uh, this blog post on the Freedom Fiends blog where I talked about this mic and in it, I said that the F57A beta is an update of the Sherb uh sm57 which is a mic from 1965 which has been used on the presidential podium in the white house since then and i wondered why they didn't change it and update to the new mic and i was thinking well mics have a sound and people are used to the sound of whoever the liar in chief is using that sound it's the sound of the president <laughs> the king's the king's voice yeah so read this first read some of these first ones here uh one guy liked it he said he quoted me as saying but i'm liberating it and making it a freedom mic the same way i take communist guns like the mosin nagant and the u.s government guns like the glock model 23 and make them my liberty guns and this guy quoted that and said i like this guy but read the ones below yeah. that you don't need to say who's Neil that. Just, well it's, it's just one it's just one guy that oh it is just one guy. with you it's he said guys, he says but, uh, uh he lost me at liar in chief. And somebody said that was silly, but he could have been talking about any politician recently. Readly, okay, this one's not as good as the other one. Um, go to the second link. It's the really like, are you kidding? Kind of responses to my. And the thing is, and one guy admitted this. I put in like dead serious, excellent, like the stuff of reviews, an excellent technical technical review for someone looking at this mic. Um, like one guy said, you know. I guess I just a little old fashioned. I prefer much to read technology reviews that consist of facts, figures, charts, and solid statements of the actual product being reviewed. I do, however, recognize that you put out a decent review and I'm sure others will like it. You did, however, lose me with how you cho chose to spice up the lingo. Nothing more, nothing less. And I said, you know, I wrote tech books for a decade. I got tired of it and retired. Now, if I only, if I write a tech review, it's only about products I'm truly excited about. And if I'm not getting paid, I have to have some fun with it to make it worth my time. I will gladly refund the money of anyone reading my free reviews who don't like them. Mm. But read some of the, <laughs> on the second page here, the, uh, that was, those were comments were all on the Reddit podcasting uh want a uh, subreddit but read the ones on the reddit audio engineering one they're pretty funny yeah somebody asked why you would write a review of one of the most commonly used cheap mics out there it's like writing a review on wonder bread yeah and i said it's a good mic for a low budget calling it cheap or dismissing it is saying let them eat cake not everybody has 500 bucks for an re20 and uh and I didn't originally have this in the in the thing, but I edited it and added it in that the fact that it is kind of like Wonder Bread is part of the reason I recommend it to podcasters because you know you're taught you're making MP3s at best or streaming audio at worst, and it's reducing the quality of it. And if you use a mic that's you know has a lot of character and sounds really spectacular, it's going to possibly and probably sound worse when it's streamed. Okay. I like yeah. the first one here. It says, not sure if this is serious and how politically, incredibly politically charged and seriously, that was really unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Let them eat Wonder Bread. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll have All more right. beans. Enough on that beef. We'll have more beefs after this. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. It's the fiends. How y'all doing today? It's those fiends. Those damn fiends. fiends. Blurg. Blurg is going to be my new cuss. Blurg. Why, why Blurg? 
I don't know, because it's not a cuss. It's, it's what uh, Liz Lemon always says on 30 Rock. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Fair enough. You can be Liz Lemon. Yeah. I don't mind. So we got uh, a little feedback from the fiends here. One is um, somebody wrote us. Who was this that wrote us on the break? Rob. Rob said, I'm struggling with what you guys see as an absolute... As I'm struggling with... Bleh. I'm struggling to read this. I'm struggling with what I see as the absolutism of many anarchists. The idea of government as a, as a necessary evil and politics as the art of the possible. I don't know what that second part means. He says, maybe it's a stage on a journey. Maybe it's a weakness in your position. I don't need a response, but I wanted to share. Love your podcast and who you've turned me on to. Which, first of all, I'd say, Nima, people love you. Stop arguing. Multitudes love you. Stop arguing with weenies who just want to be right and won't concede to anything. Yeah. People yeah. love you, man. You, you, know okay. what, you know what it's like? It's like a rock star walking down the street and, and going into the corner pub where the cover band's playing and going, you guys suck. Let me show you how to play guitar. <laughs> well, it's like that oatmeal comic you sent me too about content awesome. producers on the web. Uh, I that encourage was, everybody to go oh read that. What's God. it called? I will link that. It's yeah, uh, link it. I don't know. I will link it. It's amazing. It, it's I could have written it. Not saying he stole my ideas. Like that guy feels exactly like I do about what he does. Everything right, in right. there, you right. know. The, the the thousands of good comments you just take as oh yeah well obviously I'm awesome and it's the one it's the one bad comment that's like not even well reasoned and is just yeah. utterly silly that sticks in your head no matter what you do <laughs> yeah and his conclusion was you know art's not made in a vacuum but art is not all gr good art is not made in a vacuum but good art is also not made in a tornado filled with trolls talking about your mother's penis you know <laughs> yeah yeah. True that, true that. So let's address this guy. Uh, I can't. I don't understand what the art of the possible means. I think it might have been a typo or something. But I'm sure. No, he says, I, I think. I think he missed something. I think what he's saying is he's used to the idea of government as a necessary evil, and that politician or politics is the art of the possible. So we have to have these certain situations, um, and in order to get those things done, um, you have to have people get together and work things out and compromise so that you can come to a conclusion. A idea, governments, ideally, government is a necessary evil. Politics is the art of doing those things. Yeah. As I think what he's saying. Um, I would say, and people bring this argument up to me all the time when I'm like, you know, they're like, who would control the 300 million people in America? And, um, and I feel like that's what this is coming from. It's like, what what, what needs to be done? Like, please enlighten me because I don't know. What Do you know? Is there anything that it sounds, needs to be it done? Sound, it sounds like he's saying – it sounds like he's asking us – you know, he's saying, I really like your, your podcast, but why do you have to be so absolute about government is not the solution? And I, if that's the question, my answer is, you know, is beating a stranger a little bit okay? To get something yeah. good to happen yeah yeah and i guess that's what status tend to not get and and i think we all or i at least can sometimes have a problem with this because when you say your answer they think oh well that's not similar at all you know like if you said that to a status you'd be like but that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about you know how you pay for a public park um yeah and I guess the the answer is there does there's nothing in the world that needs to be done so urgently that you must resort to aggressive means except, to do it. Except stopping someone from aggressing you, and it's not then it's not aggressive means, it's violent means. It's an issue. It's not a aggression exactly. means initiating aggression. I mean, you know, and that's even the term of law that's used with with you know governments. They even use that. They say like, oh. You know, you mean aggre aggression means initiating violence. Right, right, yeah. right. Sorry. You know, I mean, the United States gets they get it wrong. They all get it wrong. They'll, but they'll say, you know, uh, Iran has a nuclear, re, you know, refiner for medical uranium or whatever. Uh, we're considering that an act of aggression, which means we're considering that they are being violent toward us proactively. Mm -hmm. So that's not even just something anarchists use. I mean, that's a term that's used throughout, but most people right. misuse it in like in that way. Um, right. No, right. you know, Iran making medical radioactive products is not an act of aggression, yeah. but yeah. Uh, someone coming at you with a knife is, you know, someone, 
someone calling you up and saying, I'm going to kill you. I'd say that's an act that's aggressive. I don't know if it's an act of aggression. It probably depends on whether they're going to act on it, whether they have the capability, whether they have the vicinity. You know, if someone calls you up and says, I'm going to kill you, it is not moral to go do a drive by on their house. Yeah. It is moral to walk around with your gun on your hip with one eye open, even when you're asleep. And if they start coming up your walk, say, let me see your hands, get the fuck off my property, get the blurg off my property, <laughs> you know, and if they try to come in your house, shooting them dead to stop them. But uh, I, I, I guess to me also, um, the essence, part of the essence of anarchism and why it is absolute uh, is because we hear something like the necessary evil. And my first response is evils never necessary if something is evil then it is by definition not necessary there's there's nothing necessary about it and, and when i think about it in real terms uh i can't think of any function of the state um that is necessary in the sense that that is necessary to do evil to get that function in and, society and the amazing thing is the things that people go to in their statheist arguments are often the things that are least even in a minarchist sense are least needed like the roads and the garbage pickup and the schooling i mean that stuff is done some places even in you know in america by private organizations and done better then the government does it. I mean, in all of all places in Los Angeles, there was no municipal garbage pickup in Agora Hills where we lived, you know, outside of the city. We had to contract. Now, we had a list from the government of three companies we could hire that they had approved, which is not right. But of those three companies, which were private companies, um, they all did a better job and cheaper than any municipal one I've ever paid for. And yeah. when I was a kid, you didn't pay for your garbage. The city picked it up and now like taxes are way higher than they were. And you have to pay 30 bucks every couple months or every month for your garbage pickup. You know, <laughs> what? what's with that? Like if the government does things so well, how come they have to keep raising taxes and sending you a bill? Right, right. I guess I think of that meme on the, on Facebook that you see that says uh, statism, ideas so great you have to be forced into them at gunpoint. And it's got a yeah. like little icon of the man pointing the gun at the other And I've man. heard the same thing about conservatives. Conservatives believe the government doesn't do things very well, so it should only do really important things. <laughs> Which, you know, if someone – I have more respect for someone who's truly, truly like that kind of conservative than anything else. Like my father-in-law – believes in some government, but he says the government should on only do three things, interstate highways, international treaties, and national defense. Um, I argue with him that those things need to be done at the barrel of a gun, but if you're going to say that, I mean, that makes a lot more sense than garbage pickup and teaching kids how to read. Anybody can do that, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, also... Okay, well, why don't we just talk about those three things? Uh, transportation, um, I don't see why you need a centrally planned transportation system. And we've no. talked about this before. Walter Block talks about this. There's, there's a million people who've talked about this. Um, and the interstate also, highways exist the way they do, made by the federal government uh, as a military thing. It was to transport troops and supplies and to have landing strips for military planes that's mm -hmm, why mm -hmm. a lot of times they make long stretches of them uh straight where they don't need to be where it's harder to do as opposed to the railroads which were made curvy when they didn't need to because people got paid by the government by the mile right right which brings us to national defense and i don't think defense is something that uh I guess it can be collectivized, but if it's collectivized, it should be based on some kind of contract. Um, and logistically, uh, I've said this before, but but look at a map. I don't really know what nation is going to try to attack us. Uh, maybe that was an argument you could argue a lot easier in the old world. But, um, I mean, here in the middle of North America, who do we really have to fear as far as some nation trying to attack us? And a lot um, of what the America does collectively as a country makes people want to attack Americans. Yeah, that's another good point, is, is the state does that job horribly and actually brings the opposite result of what people would want. Um, but we've got plenty more on this coming up uh, soon. Yeah. Yeah. 
Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Yo. All right. So I just want to get right back yeah. into why we don't need the state to do national defense. And I guess I, what I would say is um, this problem of the state and the national defense is a problem created by the state, right? The reason that, that there are these institutions called governments um, or nation states that have something like tanks and nuclear weapons and drones is because we gave our faith to the state in the first place. I don't think the market would ever conceive of an institution that would get big enough um, to have the intent to, to spend something on research and development for something like a, a death drone or a nuclear weapon. No, but I think that a drone – well, I don't know about that because I think if you owned – I can definitely see the reason why industry or even private citizens would want a surveillance drone if they used it in a responsible way. Like, you know, what, if, you, if you had a 50,000-acre ranch – you could have a lot less cowboys out risking their lives with rattlesnakes than uh, you know if you had a few drones. Mm, yeah, I guess there's that point. They could be used um, to deliver, uh, you know, food supplies, anything. You know, they could be used to deliver uh, supplies to an oil rig. They could be used to reconnaissance. Well, that's why, for I, that's oil. why I said death. That's why I said death dealing drones. But I guess yeah, yeah you could have weaponized drones. To I could see having. A, yeah, I could ranch. see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's still papering over a problem that the state created in the first place. Like national defense to me seems like defense from nation states who would attack your own nation state. Um, and in the lack of a state, you wouldn't have either of those things. That's yeah. the idea. You get you get rid of the state means you get rid of this idea in people's heads that it's okay to have a select few of people have a monopoly of power over a geographical region. That's what attacking the state does. And so if you have the, the absence of a state, you have the absence of something like a nation state that you would have to use a nation state to defend yourself against. Which I think leads to the third thing that, um, you know, ultra ultra real conservatives say we need which is international treaties uh and taking a step back here i mean this is something that like goes back to probably um goldwater of like you know trying to go back to the founder's intent and say all we need is you know all we need the federal government to do and that also leaves a lot of room for state and local governments but you know uh there are conservatives who will parrot this and say uh all we need is the government for all it should do is international treaties interstate highways and national defense and the thing is most people that say that really can think of a lot of other things they really wanted to do like keep those damn mexicans out and throw those pot smokers in jail and keep those women from having abortions or you know any million mm -hmm. of number of things that creep into once you let a little bit in so I think we covered the first two uh, well enough on this. I mean, it, we could talk hours about them, but we got a lot to talk about today, and we got some more reader mail to read. Uh, so we've covered interstate highways. We've covered uh, national, national defense. defense. Talk about uh, now, why we don't need a government to deal with treaties. I mean, well, I'm like, what, <laughs> treaties, what? treaties are usually used for evil anyway. They're used for, like, price fixing. They're used for stealing. They're used for declaring war. They're used for ganging up on other countries mm -hmm. together. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really something that should be done on an individual basis or, you know, a company basis, not a corporate basis. Right. We are... Right. On the fiends, well, tr we are treaties also assume the same collectivism that we're saying is the state and needs to be gotten rid of. So you get rid of the state, you get rid of this idea that we're all collectives in our geographical enclaves and we need to deal e through with each other through those institutions. It's saying, no, no, we. if I want to trade with somebody in Mexico, uh, I'm free to do that and we can come up with the terms voluntarily on an individual basis um, or you know, if I have a company on a company-to-company -company basis and, and and it doesn't it's not just mexico it's anywhere in the world you know everybody should be able to deal with anybody in the world through the same rules we don't need different geographical regions controlled by states to decide where you can buy certain things from how much of them you can buy and all that kind of stuff 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm satisfied with all that. Sure. Uh, I am too for now. And we can go ahead and move on. Cool. We got an email from uh, from a listener. I'm not going to say his name because he's talking about AA. But uh, he said, I was listening to your recent Larkin Rose interview on the Anarchy Gumbo, which I want to recommend people go check out. I did an interview with him the other day, and it's great. It's amazing. It's really fun. And I kept bringing up, you know, alcoholism and the state, like how statism is like an alcoholic and how I apply a lot of the ideas I learned in AA to dealing with statists, you know, including you don't sober a drunk up by going down to Skid Row and saying, you damn Nancy boy, faggot, you know, like, <laughs> like, like people <laughs> like tend I to do. do. Yeah. yeah. So um, the guy really liked it. He said, regarding some of your comments about Alcoholics Anonymous, I found it interesting. In the same podcast, you talked about atheist issues. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It seemed as though you're currently an atheist. Um, no, I'm not. I'm a deist, which is basically believes in a you know something created the universe something conscious something spiritual whatever but i do i believe it does not have daily day-to-day -day intervention in the train schedules and the political battles and the uh you know whether or not you know someone's wife will put out whatever mine always does but uh you know whether <laughs> you know whether you win the lotto or catch your bus uh or mm -hmm. your kid gets cured of cancer or not you know i prayed to god and my kid died of cancer anyway and people told me it was god's will and i wanted to brag i wanted to punch him in the face i really did mm -hmm. they were they're wrong um it's it's it was you know my kid died of cancer because of a mixture of like you know physics and statistics and chaos really you know like yeah. the chaos that is inherent in the universe so mm -hmm. um and that's what turned me deist. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't lose faith. I kind of lost faith. I didn't like become an atheist, but I was like, okay, God is not intervening. And I still believe that. And, uh, anybody who wants to tell me otherwise, let me know how you feel after your kid dies is something you watch or die from that you can't do anything about. So yeah, I'm a deist. Um, which is, uh, let's see. Okay. So he said, I've, while not trying to bash AA, it does help lots of people stop drinking. I found it difficult to attend because of its religious undertones. I did too. Although I used to go to a meeting called the Atheist Agnostic Anarchist Meeting in San Francisco, and they spent more time arg talking about God than the people in the, the spiritual AA meetings, because they all had issues with God, and that's why they were there. And I guess I have an issue with God, but it's not like bad Catholic potty training like it was with a lot of these people. And I will say every Satanist I've ever met had a religious upbringing you know if you don't have a religion if you don't have a god is great upbringing you don't want to become a satanist it's a reaction to daddy so uh yeah i had a difficult time with that too and someone says i even use the idea that someone will force me to attend aa meetings as a motivation to keep me from drinking uh, while I did go to a few meetings, then I stopped drinking. I found that I got in a few arguments with some self-righteous folks that really was quite uncomfortable. And I'll, I'll parrot something that's very true. I've heard in meetings is we don't come to these meetings because we're healthy. You know, you want to talk about, uh, you're going to find crazy people, argumentative people, people who are mentally sick and people who are getting better, which is why you go. Um, so and and i would and and it's a cross section of society it's every type of person it's like the internet you know the great thing about the internet is you could talk to everybody everybody in the world can talk to you the horrible thing about the internet is everybody in the world can talk to you as you found out this morning <laughs> um so he says so basically how do you handle the religious and authoritarian nature of aa um uh, i took the AA thing of uh take what you want and leave the rest. I went for 10 years, got what I needed, still use it in my life, and I've been sober for almost 10 years since then after that. So I just stopped going and, and used the principles of my life. And the authoritarian thing comes from the people. It's not really in the program. So uh, that's what I have to say about that. And we'll be back with more Freedom Fiends live after we sell some things in anarcho-capitalist paradise here. <laughs> what does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Yeah, yeah. So, so I love today we are just getting email after email from listener, and that's how it should be. We we don't like calls. I mean, you can call. I'm kidding. If you want to call, call in. It's what's the number, Nima? 
The number is 307-215-5171. Or Kitty Feet One on uh on the Skype. On Skype. Kitty Feet yep, yep. One. Or but like I- everybody else is doing, just email us at talkback <laughs> at freedomfiends.com. We've been getting a lot of those during the show, and those are fun because uh Love it. Yeah, because we don't have to, you know, deal with a caller and be it's like, hey, interu- could you turn up? Could you yeah. turn down? It doesn't feel like an interruption. Back, it feels like an interaction. And I don't yeah. even know if these people were all listening. I think they just all happened to send us emails, like five listener emails in this period of time. But um, we have another one. It's it's a fan letter for Nima, which uh, go ahead and read this one. Or should I read it? It's from um, Mark in uh, Kitchener, Ontario, which... It's right across. The, I used to live. I grew up really close to there in upstate New York, like right across Lake Erie. So I know his. I feel it, his pain. It's it's talking about me. So why don't you read it? Because it sounds weird if I'm reading about how much I love me. So hey, Nima, I'm a 44 year old fat white guy who can't stand rap or hip hop, which is what I was when you met me, Nima, and started doing hip hop with me. I was a 44 year old fat white guy uh, who didn't really like hip hop much. And he said, and yet I love your I own me video. The message is excellent and makes me feel like I'm not alone in thinking the world has gone crazy. Like (laughs) Michael and Ben Stone, your words mirror many half-formed thoughts floating around in my mind that I sometimes have trouble expressing coherently. I love this next line. I love that line too. Seeing a new Fiends or Gumbo cast pop up on my phone is a bit like a Christmas present under the tree. I can't wait to tear into it. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I, I love everything. I'll, I guess I'll address them in order. Um, first of all, um, I seem to get a lot of that. People who aren't into rap or hip hop, um, but love Eye on Me, which is um, funny because it's it's heavy hardcore hip hop. Usually, people that say I don't like hip hop, but I like you I know, like the usually, Black Eyed Peas. I like or Will or Will Smith or <laughs> oh, yeah. Kid and Play or uh, uh-huh. what, uh-huh. what was the the show Will Smith did as a, as a youngster. Fresh, fresh Prince, Prince of, of Bel Air, yeah, mm-hmm. no, but this is like hardcore club rap that you know would sound like dangerous. Club rap. Well, it would it's sound like dangerous. Screw tape rap. Yeah, yeah. it's it yeah. would sound dangerous if it, you know. I mean, you'd lock your doors and grab your gun if you heard that bump down the street. <laughs> At least I would. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I um, did once. I accidentally maybe turned I should on. Embrace it okay. though. I, I I used to be like kind of offended by that, like. Oh, I want hip hop heads to love it, not you know the uninitiated. But that's stupid. I should uh, embrace this and uh, and go with it, man. The market. Yeah, why spoken. preach to the choir, man? Why not expand yeah. the world view? Although the the next one is saying um, is an argument for preaching to the choir, uh, as opposed to getting all upset and arguing with idiot statists on Facebook. Um, you know, Ben Stone was quoting somebody else when he said this, and everybody's been quoting Ben Stone about it. But yeah, you know, maybe there is something to that. That what we're really trying to do is help flesh out people's own thoughts that are floating around in their head about liberty. Um, we're a lot more successful at that, I think, than trying to. Con- convince people who have never had those kind of thoughts yeah and you Um, know i had and that's useful and it's really not preaching to the choir because i had half formed thoughts about liberty since i was about five and yet i was voting democrat and condemning republicans and saying democrats were better and you know uh paying being proud of the fact that there are police and they have guns and no one else should but i had feelings of liberty they just weren't fully formed and i needed someone like uh you know, Shepard Humphreys and Stefan Molyneux and you and Ben Stone to come on and tell me how it is. And then immediately it all just came gushing out of me like a, like a, like a Lance Boyle. Hi, Lance right. Boyle. I'm Lance Boyle. <laughs> Hi, yeah, ladies. Yeah. You I'm know, Lance I think Boyle. That, that's, that's where it's at is, is helping people get those ideas fully formed. Um, and I, I think there probably is a lot more people out there that have that seed in them um, with half formed or eighth formed or 16th or 32nd formed thoughts in their head. Um, and that's sort of what I think our real purpose in the market is to do is to try to help bring those to the surface and, um, and get them at least the ideas that we're trying to present about uh, present about liberty, get them to know more about those so they can make a better informed decision on whether or not they reject them or not. Uh, you know, Lance like- Boyle, wants you to have his seed inside you yes <laughs> you know i want to address the last one of this too see when he said seeing a fiends or gumbo cast pop up on my phone is a bit like a christmas present under the tree i can't wait to tear into it i love that and that's like one of the best compliments i've gotten and i get a lot of compliments every day you know because yeah we work hard <laughs> not many people send us money but a lot of people give us compliments and that's even better 
Um, hey, Com- compliments are great too. They yeah. nice little. Yeah. yeah, and you know, M- Mark you Twain that, said that's like, another way we should we should have put that in the. I guess we did put that in the ad about what you can do for the fiends, but that'd really be cheesy. That what you can compliment us, and if you don't have money, <laughs> yes. compliment us. No, <laughs> what you should do is if you do, we love compliments, but really, what I tell you people to do is to go post it about us elsewhere where other yeah. people see it. But yeah, yeah Mark you're, Twain you're right. said I can live a week on a kind word, and I always said yeah, and. And two weeks if it's a, from a pretty girl. That's what I used to say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, even from a 44-year-old fat white dude who can't stand rap, whatever, a guy, that's me. That's me. That's a guy like me. So, um, but I have lost 22 and a half pounds on the Freedom Fiends diet, and I'm sticking to it, and it's good, and I love it. So, yeah, if you want to go to the Fiends yeah. diet, it rocks anybody. So, the thing about the Christmas present under the tree, that's how I feel about discovering media I like. Like, when there's a TV, I don't mm-hmm. watch much TV. But when I discover a TV show I like, I get every episode of it and watch yeah. three seasons in 48 hours straight. I mean, I burn through it and then watch it again a week later. And I feel like it's a gift from the universe. I really do. And if that's if you want to know what my religion is, I mean, that's it's like my religion is uh, like the spark through people that doesn't exist without people, you know, and most people disappoint me and are horrible. And that's why I like squirrels. But, uh, you know, when people do something right dj's laughing uh when you when people do something right it's like the hand of god touching me in special places through them <laughs> and you know i feel that way about some ben 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 some of ben's cast some of stefan molyneux's yeah. cast some of led zeppelin's rock and roll you know some yeah. of minor threat and dead kennedy's and i own me by nima vidati and i will wrap up with whatever angle you were going to go off in and say two things here um and then we'll move on because i'm just barreling through here today and this is all about you and how great you are okay you are a i wouldn't say a god to this guy but you make his his week better with every with everything you put out there and and there are thousands of people who feel that way about you, Nima. But yet, you are like the rock star walking. It'd be like if Jay Z was walking down the street and heard someone playing, you know, doing some rapping up in their apartment, and like went in there and said, "Dude, you suck," and then left. You know, that's what you're doing when you're arguing <laughs> with statheists and calling them girls' names on the internet. You are a you are a rock god of liberty. Why? Can't you accept that and move on? Don't get you. You'll never get a big head out on it. I know that. I will, but you won't. Just be you, own you, and don't try to own people who are you know. Don't try to school people who just yeah. want to fight and be trolls and make you look bad. Yeah, you're right. They don't deserve to be schooled. They didn't ask. They don't to deserve be your time, man. They don't deserve yeah. your time. Yeah, they don't deserve my time, and they don't deserve to have any kind of emotional response from me. I shouldn't give them that power over my uh, my personal feelings, man. I mean, and I and I can control that, you know. I can I can just ignore them and uh, not be a part of it because all I'm doing is is making things worse for my own mental health when I engage with these kinds of people. And uh, I usually don't fall down that wormhole, but uh, nobody's perfect, and sometimes you do have to relearn a lesson the hard way you know i've met a lot of really actually famous people like way beyond the level we're talking about about us like you know red hot chili peppers been in a room with them talked with them uh you know worked with uh uh robert downey jr you know a lot of like literary people a lot of just i don't even want to enumerate them all but it's like the ones that are really successful over a long period of time are generally pretty humble and pretty gracious and not like what we're talking about avoiding and the ones that are Okay, uh, that's the good side. The bad side is like Jaco Pastorius from the band Weather Report, commonly considered to be the greatest bass player in the world, kind of fell down wormholes with drugs and alcohol, ended up homeless. You know, uh, one of the common things to run across in New York City in a pawn shop is one of his bases. But, you know, he used to go into bars where club bands were playing and say, I am the greatest bass player in the world. Grab the guy's bass and show off. And people loved it, but it was a dick move to do. He yeah. died being beat to death in a bar by a bouncer <laughs> for acting like wow. that. Literally. Wow. Okay, so that's the right. lesson. We'll move there on after go. we sell some things <laughs> here on Freedom Fiends. Worms. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. 
worms. In veins. Worms. Yeah. So I want to talk about my mailman. Well, actually about my neighbor and my mailman. Uh, my neighbor right. works for the state and he works for the road department. Oh! I think he's on disability. He works like really restricted hours from I don't know what. Um, but he does work for the roads. The other day, I have a really good mailman and I don't want to like defend the state. And yeah, it's all like, you know, paid for with stolen money gathered at the point of a gun and private industry could do it a lot better if they'd let them and they won't. It's illegal mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. set up your own post office for less than they charge. And, mm-hmm. uh, and their pensions are backed with our tax dollars. Are stolen yeah. tax dollars. So uh, it's an inefficient and immoral system. But within that confine, I would prefer my mailman be nice and deliver my mail correctly than be a rude drunk and like put my mail in someone else's mailbox down the street and vice versa, yeah. Yeah. which used to happen all the time in California. I like mm-hmm. my mailman here. He's a nice guy. He knocks on the door when I have a package. He doesn't leave it out in the snow and the wind to get, you know, mm-hmm. it won't get stolen here, but it'll blow away and get wet. Um, so he knocked on my door. He had some some microphone pop filters for me, and uh, and when I opened the door, he was well. He handed it to me. He was smiled. He walked away, and my neighbor across the street in his front yard yelled at him by first name. I forget what his name is, but he's like, "Hey!" He said, "Hey, get off your lazy government working ass!" And they both laughed. <laughs> It reminded me of like two small time gangsters high fiving each other in the speakeasy during prohibition or something. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I can see that. Um I, I wanted to talk about state functionaries too. Um I've noticed in Austin, Texas, um now at all the hospitals, at least within the downtown campus area, um three I think there's Four, three or four major hospitals, and everyone I've been to, you know, when I'm working, ha- now has cops manning the front desk at least at night. Ew. Um, yeah, it's you and and they they can be kind of annoying. I know that are they kind manning of a small the desk? Or are they are they there in addition to whoever's manning the desk? Uh, it, it's been different for different hospitals. At one, it's it's uh, one hospital staff and one cop. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the one on 15th Street. If anybody's from Austin, I mean, are you saying like when you come in, the first person you talk to and say when they say what's wrong with you and hand you your it's forms, a it's a cop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think yeah. in Libpair there would probably be an armed private guard in a hospital right. or two, but. Right. Uh, why are why are why are the cops sitting at the desk and answering? Why the that's weird. I don't, I don't know, I, and I haven't looked into it. I'd, I'd like to do that maybe as a blog post and try to track the trend. It didn't happen when I was here uh, delivering pizzas four years ago, but it it happened now. I see that at night when I'm working, and uh, some of them can be really annoying. And it's a, it's a police statey thing that's kind of you know it's not like they're beating me with this nightstick. It's not like really outrageous, but it's annoying and and it. It's also a good study in how cops or, or state functionaries are bad at service. Like, um, I go up to one of them uh, the other night, and I'm like, uh, I got this pizza for the emergency room. And there's two cops there, one old guy and one young guy. And the young guy's got to dip in, and he looks like, you know, your traditional – he looked like he played linebacker – not linebacker, uh, offensive lineman on some football team, you know, in high school. Uh, he's got to dip in. He's all like, well, you got to go get a security clearance badge. You got to drive down to the other side of the street on the other entrance, apply for a badge, then come th- back through here and ask me where it is. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I looked at him like, I'm not doing that. And I looked was- at the older cop and I'm like, hey, can I just drive to the emergency room entrance and have the guy meet me out of the door? And he's like, yeah, you can do that. Which reminds <laughs> me of something about the uh, when I posted something on Facebook about my thing about the, the mailman and, and the state roads guy saying, hey, get off your lazy ass and like high fiving each other. He said that uh, Anthony Sabo said he used to work for the post office like 20 years ago and you know, he was 20 and everybody else working in there was 50 or 60. And the first day, a couple old timers came up to him and said, you're working too hard. Cut it out. You're making us look bad. And they weren't kidding. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah, talk to yeah. the old guy when you can, not the young guy when you're dealing with two government officials. Yeah. The old guys already know it's silly and will uh, will maybe help you bypass the silliness. The young guy's like, no, nah, I got to do it by the book with his dip in. Um, so, Which is weird yeah. because you know the the young you'd think the young guy would be the hipper one he's closer to your age but you know I guess it's like that f u f u f u you're cool I'm out the you're cool was the old guy right I don't remember it's been a while you since said in that movie I haven't seen the one movie you got me on of you don't know what it, that's it, from it, it, no I know it, it's a guy that was no square, you got like me it, huh yeah I, I got said you. you got me not you're like I know what it is yeah you I'm 
Come on, man. No, what I'm saying is is the reason I said it was an old guy is because the guy he points at and says, you're cool, is, you know, you don't know why he's cool. I don't remember if it was because he was old or because he was nerdy, but for some reason, you're like, why is that guy cool? Well, it just goes to prove talk to the old guy. The old guy's usually cooler than the young guy. Young guys got Uh shit stuff to prove, man. Old guys don't. Old guys just want to get home and feed the squirrels and sit and read books (laughs) with their wives. (laughs) Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just know it's annoying to go to a hospital. And, and you know, it doesn't annoy me that much because I've just you know got to do my job and, and be on my way. But for me, that'd be really annoying you wait if, until like, you Obama actually had care, a medical man. problem. You wait until Obamacare oh, when you're trying to deliver a pizza. There are going to be eight cops there, and they're each going to say that. And the young guy will be – they'll all be the young guy. The old guy will be retired. Well, if it gets bad, we could uh, we have precedent for doing this at w- where I work. We could just stop delivering to to state run hospitals. We actually <laughs> did that with with the hospital that's called the state hospital. Like, there's a mental <laughs> institution called the uh, Austin State Hospital, and it was such a mess bureaucratically to deliver a pizza to the patients there because it's usually the patients, you know, the people in the mental institution. I guess they do it as like a treat, and sometimes the you know the guards will let them do it as a treat. And it was such a mess dealing with it that we just decided no, we and- we're not. Ever and yeah, your and your again. boss is probably cool with that because it costs them money if you have to sit there for forty minutes in trying to deliver one pizza. No, exactly, exactly. Uh, sit there for forty minutes, and and nobody wanted to do this. It was always the worst. Not only is it worse for the company because it takes a lot longer, but uh, it's worse they for don't the driver tip. because crazy people don't tip. They don't know what the world is. Government they don't understand people understand the concept of that. Government people probably don't tip too, unless the government's paying for the product and the tip is included. You know. Uh, that does happen, and they do. Uh, mm, some of my best tippers are uh, the cops. When I when I go deliver down to the the cop shop, um, they give me a good tip, but it's not. It probably it's not comes their money. out of it. Probably comes out of like you know. There's they this have thing like a petty in, cash in Wyoming. In Wyoming now, if you're arrested and convicted for anything, they add on these two or three fees, and like one is you have to make a donation to the schools, and one is a victim compensation fund, even if you were at a crime that had no victim. You know, and they're like a couple hundred bucks each. And uh, Mm. who knows if that actually goes to victims in any way. And the school thing, Mm -hmm. like somebody recently was like, I don't want to give money to the schools. I want to give money to a different uh, charity and like had to find one the judge would approve. You know, he couldn't send it to the Freedom Fiends. It had to be a 501c3. Uh, Yeah. So that's the that's a racket they got going here. That's probably what pays for the pizza there is the victim compensation fund. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Um, yeah, although I guess, you know, in real world, instead of bizarre world, it would be the, the victimizer compensation fund since the cops are getting yeah. comp, comp, compensated for that. <laughs> yeah. Something like foghorn leghorn. So Queen Victoria in Yemen, you know, when people, when status say, well, they moved to Somalia, that's old information. They should say move to Yemen because Yemen is probably more what they're thinking of as an anarchic, violent society where there's really not much government. Somalia is kind of building itself back up. Well, I don't know. That's not the word, but there's more government in Somalia than there used to be. And places in Yemen really have very little. And, you know, when there, where there is government, it's extremely oppressive. And then most of the places, they don't have much. This is interesting, though. There's a Queen Victoria statue in Yemen because it used to be an English uh, protectorate and the statue is still uh-huh. up and Queen Victoria, her name is synonymous with sexual repression, you know, Victorian attitudes, but sometimes Muslim fundamentalists there put a veil on the statue to cover her face. So, <laughs> is that awesome? That's, that's funny, man. That, that's, that's funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, uh, for statists out there, you can't really, you don't really live in anarcho capital paradise uh, if you've got drones above your head that can kill you at any time that are directed at the hands of the president of America. Yeah, so. or if you've got, you know, feudal warlords controlling citizens who've been disarmed by the UN for their own good. Right, right. And I guess that's another uh, point to make is... Or American boots the state, on the ground. Boots well, on the ground. Well, no, it, it's that we're anti-state and the state is... Any situation, it, it's that thing in mind in people's minds that gives other people the legitimacy to have a monopoly. Yeah, the, of violence the mafia is a, the mafia is a state. You know, the ma- the, yeah, the mafia is a state. The church in the old days, Spanish Inquisition church, that was uh, a state. I would consider it. So um, I think of that as the state, and that's what I'm railing against. So when you say, well, you know, you just have warlords doing this and that, well, the warlords are also another form of the state if people accept them. Who would build the roads without the government? people who don't steal 
you know, I don't, I can't, I'm not saying these people steal, but, uh, you know, I don't know where the money came from. The fam, there's one family that brokered all the road deals in Wyoming going back many, many decades. They live in a compound of mansions that makes the White House look like an outhouse. <laughs> right, right. Um, Barbara Bush told people to get over Obama's reelection. Like, it's, he won. Get over it. I'd say that's different heads of the same lizard body, but I'm only speaking figuratively. <laughs> Barbara Bush. Embrace yeah. Obama. Yeah. He's what's happening. Mm. All right. Thanks, so Fiend. Square. Fiend's out. Peace. Thanks, man. Love the Fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the Fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon on an IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock.